Retroperitoneal abscess is an uncommon clinical condition. It is usually an insidious condition and often has non-specific presentations. It does not produce any signs of peritonitis because of which it often leads to late diagnosis and misdiagnosis. Whenever that happens, it leads to high incidences of mortality. Before we talk about retroperitoneal abscess, we need to understand few concepts of retroperitoneal spaces. If we look at the diagram on the left side, the blue line indicates peritoneum and the red line indicates fascia transversalis. The space between the peritoneum and the fascia transversalis is called as the retroperitoneal space. This retroperitoneal space extends from the diaphragm on top to the pelvic preem below. This is a closed space superiorly. However, inferiorly it opens into the pelvis. Whenever there is retroperitoneal abscess, there is collection of infective material in this retroperitoneal space and it can often extend down into the pelvis and in cases of psoas abscess, it can extend down into the thigh. This retroperitoneal space can be divided into three distinct compartments the anterior pararenal space, perirenal space and the posterior pararenal space. We will now look at each of these spaces in detail. The anterior pararenal space contains retroperitoneal organs like the ascending colon, the descending colon, pancreas and the retroperitoneal portion of the duodenum. The perirenal space contains both the kidneys along with adrenal glands with renal artery, vein and renal pelvis along with inferior vena cava and aorta. Posterior pararenal space contains fat muscles like quadratus lumborum and psoas along with spine. A retroperitoneal abscess usually affects people belonging to the age group of 30 to 50 years and it has got a slight male predominance. Based on sources of infection, retroperitoneal abscess can be divided into two groups, primary or secondary. Primary retroperitoneal abscess, the infective source is usually due to hematological dissemination. And in secondary retroperitoneal abscess, the infection is usually from an organ which lies within the retroperitoneal space. In case of primary retroperitoneal abscess, hematological dissemination usually happens from spine or muscle and in case of secondary retroperitoneal abscess, pyelonephritis secondary to genitourinary infection is the most common cause. Bacteriology of retroperitoneal abscess is related to underlying etiology. If the infection source is kidney, then the abscess is usually monomicrobial and consists mostly of gram-negative organisms like Proteus mirabilis and E. coli. If GI tract is the source of infection, then the abscess is polymicrobial consisting of bacteria like E. coli, enterobacter species, enterococci, 
and anaerobes like bacterioid species. Primary retroperitoneal abscess which occurs due to hematogenous sources are also monomicrobial and mostly consists of staphylococcal species. We should not forget tuberculosis as a cause of retroperitoneal abscess. Risk factors for retroperitoneal abscess consist of chronic diseases like renal stones, HIV, diabetes mellitus and malignancy. Symptoms of retroperitoneal abscess consists of abdominal pain or flank pain which is often vague, fever and chills, malaise, weight loss and patients with psoas abscesses may have referred pain to the hip, groin or knee. Imaging can be an important modality for diagnosis of retroperitoneal abscess. There are two main modalities, the CT scan and MRI. The CT scan is reliable and has sensitivity ranging from 90 to 100%. MRI is preferred for abscesses originating from spine and it gives a clear vision of paraspinal soft tissue. This is a CT scan showing retroperitoneal abscess. The retroperitoneal abscess is a hypodense lesion which is seen in the retroperitoneal space. And this is a T2 weighted MRI scan showing hyper intense abscess near the psoas muscle extending across the treatment of retroperitoneal abscess consists of appropriate antibiotics and adequate drainage. A CT guided catheter insertion can be done and sometimes multiple catheter insertion may be needed for a multi-loculated collection. Surgical approach can also be employed for draining retroperitoneal abscess. A laparoscopic or retroperitoneoscopic approach can be taken. With that, we come to the end of the video. I hope you like the video. Kindly subscribe my channel and press the like button. Thank you so much.